All right, there's no response to that. This is Mr. DeGrate's motion for summary judgment regarding parentage. And Ms. Lassiter, did you receive a, a copy of, of his motion and materials? I'm not sure. Um, I got the petition, I did a response, and then I didn't get anything back. Okay. And then um, as far, let me just double check something. So I, it looks like he filed his, his motion for summary judgment on January 3rd. And then it looks like you were served copies of that shortly thereafter. Does that sound right? I don't know. It was actually a little while. I don't, and my stuff was delivered to my mother's house for some reason. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. And his, his motion for summary judgment is basically, it's, it's a three page document. Um, it says, it states his name. He says, based on some statute, he's declaring that he's not the legal parent of June. Um, that talks about genetic testing and talks about, um, and then it's, it's signed by him. So that's, that's the th two, two or three page document. And then he filed, um, a document that is, purports to be a DNA test report, and then he note, put put it on a he used a docket notice, which it basically puts the case onto this this case this um, this docket here today. Um, and then I didn't see a response filed by you. Did you file a, a response with the court? Or what exactly? So he's asking. He's he's saying he should he should he's asking that he be declared not the parent of June or the father of June. Yeah, I I made a response, okay, but only one because I never got anything else after that besides the thing for the court date. Okay, and and when you, so your response did you did you give it to the court clerk? Yeah. Okay, and did you send him a copy? Mm -hmm. Okay, and when when did you do that? I don't know exactly when it was. Roughly, but... like last week, two weeks ago, a day ago. I want to say either like November or December, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so a while ago. I think so. Months. Okay. Um, okay. So let me go back a little bit. Yeah, I see. So it looks like October 18th, you filed a six-page response. It says uh, response to petition to decide parentage. And there's some boxes you can check where you agree or disagree. I see that. Um, and then you talk about you want his name off the lease and other things related to TANF and state benefits. Okay, so I see that. Um, so, okay, so so going back a little bit, back in May, he filed a petition to determine parentage, to, to determine whether he was or wasn't the, the father. So that was back in, in May, and he sent out a summons. Um, and it looks like then you were probably served shortly thereafter, uh, served with those with that summons or that petition what he was asking for um and then you filed your response in october and then he brought what's called a motion for summary judgment which is a basically a motion he's saying hey there's really no dispute here so we don't need to take this for any further he's saying we don't need to take this to trial because um he's he, in his position is that he's saying that uh because the the dna report shows basically zero probability that he's the father he says uh that kind of ends the the discussion at this point so that's kind of the document that I'm asking if 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 you received that one. No. Okay, you did not receive that one. Um, but you did receive the the some type of notice for today's hearing, and that's why you're here. Well, I got the thing just yesterday yesterday at my mom saying that it was the second notice, but we never even got the first one. Okay. Uh, I just came here to figure out the court date yesterday. Okay. All right, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. So the address that's on is file that the best address or is there a better one? Yeah, that's my address. Um, he's been also using my address this whole time. Okay. All right. And let me ask Miss. Uh, well, we're kind of just digesting that for a moment. I'll ask Miss Looney. Uh, what's What's the state's position related to today's matter? Your Honor, we would just be deferring to the court. We don't have a position um, whether the motion is granted, um, but we did note that there was potentially service issues on the mother. Okay, all right. All right, well, two things, two observations. One, Mr. DeGrate is not is not present. Um, and then the second item is that Ms. Uh, Ms. Lassiter indicates that she's, she has not received the, the motion for summary judgment. Uh, so that it's problematic on, on those two 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 points to 
And so let me just double check one item. Okay. So the 40 still good for, for you, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and then it looks, and then is, is your mom's address different? Yes. Okay. Is it a, a long view address? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I think, um, let me ask you, Ms. Lassiter. So, so I kind of explained what Mr. DeGrate's um, motion is. His motion is saying, hey, I'm not the father. This is the DNA test that, that shows it. Uh, that ends the story. I'm off. I'm out, whatever you want to call it. Um, do you want to file a written response to that? So I know your position. Um, and have opportunity to look at what he's asking for. I don't, I don't. I, I don't really know. All I know is that he knew from the beginning that she may not be his. Um, he only wanted to do DNA testing when child support got involved. Okay. Okay. So, well, here, here's my take. I, I think I think um, it would be wise to give you an opportunity to to look at look at what his motion is, uh, so you have an opportunity to respond in writing uh, and okay. not kind of decide it here on the on the fly. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is set the matter over to the 21st of February. Um, so a couple of different ways. Um, one, if you haven't received his, his motion, he, he's saying that he mailed it to you on the, to the 42nd Avenue address. Uh, you're indicating that you haven't, um, haven't received it. Um, so so to, to be on the safe side, you could, you could look, Go to the clerk's office and ask for a copy of the motion for summary judgment. Okay. And then you can uh, file a response and send to, with the court to what he's asking for. You can think about it and then file a response. And then you can then you'd need to send to him a copy, serve him with a copy, so he knows what what your response is. And then we would be back here on the twenty uh, first. Do you have any questions? I know we threw a lot at you right here, but do you have any questions? Not that I can think of. All right. Yeah. Double check with the clerk's office as far as that motion. Get, get a copy of that. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, if, uh, and then if you could file a response and then send him a copy of your response and we'll see okay. you on the 21st. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Thanks Thank for you. being here. All right. That'll conclude uh, the, the, the great Lassiter matter. For now. Seven on the docket. Um, I came into some information late last week that um, slowed me down a little bit that I needed to include in my report. And I'd like to ask for uh, a couple weeks continuance, please. Okay. Thank you. So I, I so Ms. Corey is here as the guardian. I see that Christopher Zimmerman's on the line. Mr. Zimmerman, can you hear me okay? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thanks for being here today. And then uh, Desiree Zimmerman, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, well, welcome to you also, Ms. Zimmerman. All right, so Ms. Uh, Ms. We're here today to to receive the 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 uh, final iteration of the guardian ad litem report. Ms. Corey indicated that she needs additional uh, time based on some new information that came to light. So she's asking for a continuance for her to submit that for you to review it and give the court an opportunity to review it. And so I'll ask if any party has an, any objection to that. So Mr. Zimmerman, do you have any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Ms. Zimmerman, do you have any objection to that? Uh, I. I'm just a little bit confused because I thought this was the final court hearing. Yeah, there, there was intention today to have a what's called a final guardian ad litem report. And then hopefully based on that, make some some decisions. Uh, but uh, Ms. Corey's indicated she doesn't have that report uh, prepared as of yet. And she's asking for a two week set over. OK. OK. So I'll, I'll grant that request. The two weeks from today is the docket's fairly full. So let me just ask the parties if there's any strong objection if we were to set it to the 21st of February, February 21. Mr. Zimmerman? Uh, no, sir. No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Zimmerman, any strong objection if we were to set it to the 21st? No. 208. All right, and Ms. Corey, how about you? Sounds yes, good. Your Honor. You. Okay. okay, and it looks, right. it looks like Mr. Serafan, you're present, and Ms. Ms. Carroll, you're present? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so I heard Mr. Serafan, and then Ms. Carroll, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. And then Ms. Turnbull is present also. And That's Turnbull, right. can, you, can you hear me okay? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Perfect. All right, uh, from the review of the, the minutes and the, the case, uh, I noted that we're here to uh, review 
guardian payment uh, of the guardian ad litem. Last time we were here was uh, December 20th. Looks like mm -hmm. at that time, Mr. Serafin had, had made payment in full and mm -hmm. that uh, Ms. Ms. Carroll was in process and, and needed to make a payment, uh, needed a little extra time uh, to through January to make payment. So maybe Ms. Turnbull, you can give us an update and then we can hear from the parties. Yes, so Ms. Carroll um, did need a little extra time. She um, had some trouble following through originally on the scheduled payment date, but she has secured um, a way to borrow some of the money and she's um, in process of paying me currently. Um, she made a payment yesterday, another one today. Um, she's not quite um, paid in full, but I, hopefully by tomorrow that that will be the case. And so I anticipate we can move forward um, with the report. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Carroll, any input from you? Um, I did make the final payment this morning. It was just right before court, so she doesn't have that quite yet. Okay. But, um, okay. Other than that, I'm anticipating moving forward as well. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Sheriff, any input on, on those issues? I don't know if you have any input or not on that. No, Your Honor. Okay. Thanks. All right, so the the guardian ad litem order appointing Ms. Turnbull was it looks like that was entered late uh, August of 2023. Um, so at this point in time, with it sounds like payments are, have been made, Ms. Turnbull will be effectively able to to move forward and uh, start working and and produce produce the report. Is that kind of where we're at? Yes. Okay, and and as far as timeframes or or, or general timeframes from now that the the payments have been made and the work can, can start in earnest. Uh, Ms. Turnbull, do you have a, a general estimate as far as timeframes? Given my other caseload right now, could could we do about six weeks? Sure. So taking a look at we're at the end of January now, so that would put us mid mid March. So we could look at March twentieth for a review date for for that guardian that litem report, and just with that proposal, uh, what do you think about that, Ms. Turnbull? I think that would work fine. Okay, and Ms. Carroll, you, your thoughts? That works fine. Thank you. And Mr. Serafin, your thoughts? That's fine. Okay. And, and I think you said that's fine. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So we will no um, we'll set the matter to March 20th at 9 a.m. for the uh, presentation okay. and consideration of the Guardian Ad Litem report. Um, we'll see everybody then. Any any final questions? No. no okay. Great. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Today. Uh, we'll that's see everybody okay. on Guardian Ad Litem. Sounds good. Thank you. I'll ask you. if. Um, Stephen Utter is present. Stephen, are you Utter? Are you here? Not hearing a response. And then Kirby Young, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, welcome to you, Ms. Young. All right. And then again, just uh, Stephen Utter, if you're on the line today, I can't hear you. So make sure you're unmuted and please state your name so that I, I know you're present. Stephen Utter. All right, not hearing a response. Um, a review of the file at least informs me, and I'll share this with you, you all, and you can correct me if I'm if I'm off or any additional information to help the case move forward. So it looks like there was a um, temporary parenting plan that was put in place back in August. Uh, there was a suspension of that. Um, it was kind of put on hold, um, and the reunification counseling was started. Um, that was kind of the report as of December 13th, and I was kind of of the mind that I would see some type of input or hear some input re related to the reunification counselor, how things are going. Uh, so, yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. okay. Feel, free to, feel free to jump in. That's fine. Um, so we had <clears throat> our last counseling on December 21st. Um, and then we were scheduled again, January um, 8th, uh, the night before Mr. Utter had sent the counselor a text, I guess I got a text at 1030. Uh, on the 7th that he couldn't make it. So we went to January 22nd for the next one. And I got a text that morning at 730 that he wasn't able to make it to the nine o'clock. Um, I have reached out to Keith in the just the stress that it's causing for Parker. Um, you know, it's a lot of I try not to let him know too many days in advance of when, you know, I try to give him like three days of, hey, heads up counseling. And then these past two times of, you know, not showing up. Um, and I also reached out to the counselor to, you know, kind of have her input on it. Um, I haven't heard back her input um, or the next counseling. I reached out to her yesterday to try to figure out, you know, is there any set days that, you know, work for him? I also have to take time off of work um, and it's, they're only an hour long. 
I, I just, I'm not happy with the consistency that he's showing already. Thank you, Ms. Young. I appreciate that. Mr. Lawrence. Uh, Your Honor, to refresh the court's memory, uh, when Parker was born, um, Stevie uh, was already, uh, re he was married to another woman. And that woman was highly mentally unstable and threatened to kill Kirby and Parker if Stevie showed any interest in Parker. So for 10 years, he maintained no contact with Parker. The whole reason that we're here was Stevie decided at some point that he wanted to reunite with Parker. And so we're here before the court uh, trying to institute uh, reconciliation counseling. But from Parker's standpoint, uh, his father chose uh, his, uh, his wife over, over him. And then to, uh, at the last second, cancel uh, reconciliation counseling meetings uh, only uh, reinforces that re uh, reject excuse me, rejection. And now for him to not even show up at the hearing today, I, I don't know what the motivation level is for Stevie at this point. Okay, thank you. So at this point, Ms. Ms. Young, you indicated that the cancellation of the, the most recent appointment, the cancellation occurred the morning of January 27th. <clears throat> and at this point, are there new new appointment dates set or is it still just up in the air? Um, so after talking to the counselor yesterday, um, she gave me, I think it was three different days, you know, if they would work. And I was like, I, you know, the first two I knew I could, you know, take off of work. And so I told her, you know, let's do those. And she goes, well, she goes, I guess those aren't going to work for him either. I, so I don't, there, there's nothing scheduled as of yet. She's trying to figure out his schedule to be able to see if that works you know, for us, which I've been very accommodating of, you know, trying to figure out times for him. Um, it's just, it's, it's really taken its toll. And I don't know. And like I, when I reached out to Keith, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to make it better for Parker. I, I don't know. Thank you. How many, how many reunification sessions have occurred? Is it just the one that occurred on the 21st? Uh, two. I Two. two. Yeah. In, in in what period of time? Um, it was a month, I want to say, because I think we came to court and he had already, he was going to his first one, Parker and Stevie were meeting, and then we did the 21st one. Okay, so only two. So, yeah, so it was not, I don't know, a couple weeks apart, I think they were. All right, so at this point, the, the, all, all visitation is, is suspended, that, that suspension... <laughs> Uh, it seems appropriate to continue until there's a, a greater showing of engagement with the reunification re counseling. Mr. Lawrence, any concerns with that approach? Uh, not at all, Your Honor. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Um, I, I'm of the mind to maybe review it one more time, and if there's no active engagement with your reunification counseling or if it's inconsistent, uh, then certainly that's going to be viewed dimly. Uh, as far as Mr. Utter's motivation and what he wants to accomplish, um, because we're dealing with the expectations and hopes of, of a child who I think is 11 or 12, uh, and there yeah. needs to be that safeguarding of, of that, of Parker. Um, so, let's see, if there's discussion as far as dates coming up, as far as reunification counseling, um, so it looks like there's about a six-week period from the last uh, hearing um, any objection if we were to set it out six weeks for the review to get an update to see if there's been a change uh, with, the with the consistency of the reunification counseling? No, that's fine. Mr. Lawrence? I'm fine with that, Your Honor. Okay. Let's send it over to March 13th. March 13th is a Wednesday at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll look forward to having an update from uh, the reunification counselor if the counseling has has occurred. That would be fantastic. If um, I don't know if Mr. Lawrence, if if you could reach out to the counselor and and and, and request that, or yeah, I I can certainly do that, Your Honor. Okay, that would be appreciated, and then we'll have a, a little better, a little maybe more focused idea of how things are going or or not. So, Ms. Young, any questions on your end? I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> thanks for being here today, Mr. Lawrence. Any final items on your end? No, Your Honor. Okay, th thank you for your input today. Uh, we'll see everybody on March 13th uh, for an update on that reunification counseling. If you're on the thank line, you. please make sure you're unmuted and state your name.
All right, there's no response. This is uh, Ms. Beltran, this is your, your motion for a parenting plan, correct? Uh, it's supposed to be for the final, the final divorce. Okay. So, oh, thanks. <laughs> Could you just repeat that? This, um, I was told it was for the final end of the divorce. Just to, to fi finish the, everything up? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just go back here a little bit. And that's what your, your docket notice says, finalization of divorce. Yes. Um, and so your petition for divorce was filed in October. Parenting Proposed parenting plan was October also. You filed uh, information about finances and went through the certificate process where you met with one of the, one of the, the courthouse facilitators. Yes. Looks like you did that. That's great. And then it looks like um, Mr. Beltran gave uh, supplied uh, acceptance of service. And this is where I had a question for you is on the service issue. So on this ex service accepted document, it says um, he signs his name and says, I agree this court has jurisdiction over me for this case. And he says that he received a copy of the notice of hearing for January 31st of for today's date. Yes. Um, one question I had is whether you filed and, pardon me, if you served him a copy of your petition for the dissolution, a copy of the proposed parenting plan, copy of your financial declaration. Yes, he's been served everything. Okay. So the way the way that I generally know that, I trust what you say. Uh, the, however, the, I, I we're, we're kind of a paper-based system okay. and the, I have to look at the paper. So when it says this service accepted document that he signed, he says the only document that he received and received was the notice of the January 31st hearing. He didn't receive uh, the proposed parenting plan box is not marked. The petition for disillusion is not marked. Uh, the summons is not marked. So based on the paper, he didn't get any of it. Oh, that's because when I met with the facilitator, she mm -hmm. said just to check that box for everything. Yeah, that doesn't cut it. Okay. That doesn't cut it just, just because so... So what that tells me that since that only that one box is, is marked, uh -huh. that's that tells me that the document that he received is this one. It says um, 12 parties, there's going to be a hearing. It's going to happen on January 31st. And the reason for the date is a finalization, finalization of dissolution. Yes. Oh. It kind of it does. I mean, so the clerk points out a really good point. Um, it's on the on your petition for dissolution, uh, if they go to the very end page, uh, it says I Thomas or Tomas Beltran Calixto agree to join in this petition. I don't need to be notified about hearings. I ask the petitioner to notify me about any hearings in this case, which is kind of like it's kind of contradictory. Don't notify me. But you don't need to tell me, but tell me. Uh, so you complied with that by telling them as far as giving them notice. Um, so he agrees to the petition. The petition lays out things that you want um, as far as the divorce, right? Yes. Um, so you're saying you're, you're laying out, you know, some dates when you're married, when you're separated. Um, and talking about jurisdiction, whether somebody's pregnant or not, talks about, is it Zimena? Jimena. Jimena, thank you. The age of Jimena. Um, talks about where the children have lived in the past. Talks about jurisdiction. Uh, talks about a parenting plan. You say you ask the court to order a parenting plan for the children. Um, at the same time as this petition, doesn't talk about child support. Talks, doesn't and talks about different properties that you do or don't have. Debts. Talks about that. Spousal maintenance, protection order. So it talks about all of that. So what I know is from his signature, um, he says I agree to join in this petition. So he's agreeing with basically what you're asking. Yes. What I don't see is that he's he signed off and agrees on the proposed parenting plan. In, in other words, he knows the contours of what that parenting plan looks like. So he probably knows what it looks like, but there's nothing that tells me that he's had in, in his hands the proposed parenting plan. Is there anything that maybe you know that you would I, tell me? I thought that he had signed them all. Okay. And, let, and I'll look for that. Thank okay. you. Let me just double check. Okay. So he signed that off on October 2nd. Thank you. You're helping me. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and then, okay, so so that gives me greater confidence that he's he's seen seen that because he signed it, um, and then he's indicating that he's joined in the petition. The petition uh, asked for a certain relief, and it also asked for a parenting plan, which he's seen by virtue of his signature. So that's all very helpful. I have your proposed orders here. So let me just take a quick look at them. And are, are the 
the proposed orders here, do, have you made any changes to the ones you originally filed or are they, are they the same? They're the same. Okay. All right. So I have findings and conclusions about a marriage. I have a final divorce decree. I have a parenting plan and also a child support worksheet and a child support order. And on the child support, let me just ask, just to satisfy my curiosity, with your petition for dissolution that you filed back in October, did you make a request for child support? I don't believe so, because we had agreed mutually that we were just going to work it out between ourselves, but I was told that we needed one. Okay. So so the, so the one thing I see in your petition that you, you asked that relates to child support is that you asked the court to order that we have the that we have the right to claim the, the child as a, a dependent for uh, personal tax exemptions. Yes. And so that's the one thing that's noted there. And that's what he's been notified of. So so that in his mind, um, if we were to enter a, a, a child support order that's different than what you had initially asked for, that would be a switch, right? Does that make sense? Yes. So initially you asked, hey, we don't need child support. All we're asking for is like tax exemption. Who, who gets the tax exemption? And now what I'm looking at with your child support order is that um, these are new. They, these weren't initially filed. So he, he he hasn't seen these. Is that accurate? He's seen every paper. Okay. I don't know if he Had, signed them. I thought he had signed everything. Okay. So let me take a look. On the proposed order of child support, I, I see your signature present. Um, I don't see his on, on that on that one. Let me look at the worksheet. So on the worksheet, I see your signature and I see what looks to be his consistent with his other signature. So on the worksheet, good to go. On the child support order, let me just look and see if I may have missed it. But I'm not, I, I believe I'm not seeing his signature on, on this document. Okay, so it has your signature, your printed name, and then adjacent is, would be a place for him to sign and for his name to be written. And the, yeah, I, I'm not seeing it on, on that end. So I think, so at this point, I'll, I'll share kind of what my, my viewpoint is. Uh, the findings and conclusions, I'm happy to sign off on that. You've indicated that's the same and he's been given notice of that. The final divorce, there's you're not asking for anything new. He signed off on that. He's aware of that. The parenting plan, uh, there's been no changes there. And he's... Uh, he signed off on, well, he's indicated that he's he's joined in the petition and the like. So I can sign off on those. The child support order, I don't think I'm in a position to do that because when he signed the joiner said, hey, whatever she wants, good to go. Whatever she asked for here, I'm good to go. Um, he wasn't made aware of that specifically. So the worksheet kind of alludes to the fact that he probably saw the, the child support order, uh, but it's nice. It's, it's good to have everything just fine-tuned and precise. Yeah, I understand. So I'll sign the three orders, the, the worksheet, uh, we can uh, do one of two things, uh, give that back to you. And then once he signs the child support order, um, then you could bring back both back to the court clerk or court clerk could keep the signed worksheet that's signed by Mr. Beltran. And then you could get his signature on this document, the child support order. Okay, I can do that. So I'll, I'll give that one back to you. And that's the one that, that lacks a signature. We'll keep the worksheet. And how long do you think it would take for you to get that signature and come back in a week or two or three? Um, I could get it from him today, return today. it today. Um, but I will be gone from February 19th to February 28th. Okay, you'll be gone from February 19th to the 28th. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we do this? Um, would, would two weeks be okay, the 14th? Yeah. Okay. So we'll set it over to the 14th of February at 9 a.m., and we'll look for, we'll, we'll keep the worksheet here. Okay. And then you'll get that order back to us and then we can sign off on that. Okay. You need, uh, thanks for your patience and appreciate your input. Uh, do, do you have it? Do you have any questions at this point? I don't think so. Okay. So I, I'm signing those proposed orders that I mentioned, the, the findings of fact, conclusions of law, the, the, the dissolution decree. And if you need copies of those documents, you can check with the clerk's office. Uh, I, I generally say, two days, but I think you probably, if it generally two days works out pretty well and you get a copy of them okay. if you need it for your records. So I'll just finish signing that. Great. And once I've done well, that, well, I'll thanks for joining us. I, I called your case uh, fairly near the top of the docket. So we started at nine o'clock and looks like you arrived a little bit after that. So we had yes. already finished the case when we, when, when you came on. So Ms. Lassiter was here. She was in, in the courtroom. Um, I explained to her 
that we're on for your motion for summary judgment regarding parentage. And I explained that uh, you, what the purpose of your motion was basically uh, related to June based on the DNA report that you're not the, not the father of June. Therefore you're asking to be removed from, from any documentation and be listed as, as non-parent. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's what I explained to her. Um, and then, um, Madam Clerk, on your notes, does it indicate which day we set it over to? 21st. Okay. So, Mr. DeGrate, since, since you weren't here at the time, I set the matter over to February 21. That's a Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. She indicated that uh, she didn't get a copy of the motion for summary judgment, so she was going to go to the clerk's office and get a copy of that. So, um, And so then she was going to look at it, read over it, and then file a response and she was going to file that with the court and then send a copy of that response to you. So you could look at it and everybody kind of know where, what everybody's position is related to your motion. So that's kind of, that's the ground that we covered at that time. Um, do you have any questions? Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the link that I was provided on the website wasn't working and I was in a zoom, I was in the docket, but it wasn't showing that I was. It said it was waiting for us to connect me. I waited for about 18 minutes. I just assumed it was running late. Um, so I called the clerk's office and she re redirected me to another link uh, that actually got me in, which, you know, that's understandable. I've never done anything like this. Um, my question is, uh, like, I guess, how many core dates do you think I have? Like, probably one because, more. Okay, because I mean, based on the DNA, like I'm not the father. Um, I'm not going to say Olivia misled me, but I was, you know, to believe that she was my daughter. And like, I get Olivia's standpoint as far as like, you know, her situation. But as far as like parenting for June goes, I just, I didn't think it would work between us based on her actions and whatnot. In our history, so I, I just figured it'd be better for me to just opt out before you know uh, any feelings got hurt worse. I guess, uh, and it, it does suck. I do miss the girls and whatnot, but uh, okay, yeah, and I, I appreciate that explanation, Mr. Great. And I think those are some of those topics that you raised are definitely topics that we will explore when we come back on, on the twenty first of, of February. Was that the correct date, Madam Clerk? Twenty first. Okay. Yeah. So February 21st is the date we'll come back. Um, if, uh, if Ms. Lassiter uh, files a, a, a response to your motion, uh, she indicated that she'll, she'll serve that on you. You'll see it. And then when we come back here on the 21st, uh, we can make a decision on, on your motion. Okay. You said February 1st. Uh, Pardon me, February 21st, 21st. At 9 a.m.? Yes. Yep. So February 21, 9 a.m. Wednesday. And uh, then we'll take up the, the your motion at, on that date and time. Okay, thank you, uh, Your Honor. All right, thanks, Mr. Great. I appreciate your input and we and your presence. We will see you on the twenty first. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, there, thanks. It looks like Miss Keith is present. Miss Keith, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, great. And then I see Garrett Alton is present. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yep. Wonderful. And Miss Kell, I I can see you. Can you hear me? Okay. I can, and just to be clear, Your Honor, I've actually I'm I'm no longer technically on this case, but I'm here to, you know, uh, give input if Your Honor's interested or if that's appropriate in any way. Okay, great, thank you. I appreciate that extra effort being here today. <laughs> All right, so uh, what I see is that there, um, this is motions brought by by Ms. Keefe. Uh, there's two allegations of contempt related to. Paragraph 14K1 of the parenting plan and 14H3 of the parenting plan specifically. Uh, the first one is cooperating with the exchange of information. Um, and the second is an allegation related to derogatory comments. Uh, so that's one aspect of today's hearing um, is the motion for contempt on those two prongs, if you will. And then I, I noted also is that there is a restraining order, a temporary restraining order that was issued and that was served upon uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alton, and uh, and I'm just going to look at one item just to confirm that this is the pr appropriate docket to hear that matter. Um, so I'm looking at the temporary restraining order, and it's set it to today's date. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so what I've read is. 
the a, a motion for the restraining order and motions for order to show cause related to the contempts. Ms. Keefe, is there any other matters that you, that you mm -hmm. feel were going to be addressed today, but I have not mentioned? Um, I just the so Garrett got served on the tenth. Um, so the Wednesday before I was supposed to get him on Thursday, the clerk's office told me that I was going to have to serve him. Um, and he found out he kept landing that night, regardless of the restraining order. And he went home and he screamed at him, calling, telling him that he was going to send him to jail, all of this stuff. Um, so his abuse just keeps going no matter what is going on. All right. So you indicated that the service of the it looks like I, I'm showing that there was the service of the immediate restraining order occurred on January 10th. Yeah. Um, and then as far as the contempts, <laughs> did you serve uh, copies of your motion for the order to show cause? Um, I did yesterday um, with the snow and everything. We couldn't really get off my hill because I live in Tootle, uh, well, Castle Rock. And then um, my dad had to work overtime. He was on a shutdown. He works at the mill. So he was the one that was going to like serve him. My mom um, got diagnosed with kidney cancer and she had to have her kidney removed. So she's been dealing with that. So I just didn't really have anybody to serve him um, until yesterday. But could I start mailing him so that I could serve him faster or... That's one option that you have. There's personal service can but be effectuated. I... So personal service can be effectuated yeah. through a variety a variety of means. So yes, so that's that's uh, so with, with if he was served yesterday, then I I know what Ms. Keefe's position is related to the contempts. I don't know Mr. Alt Alton's position related to the contempts since he wasn't he didn't have really an opportunity to respond to them. So Mr. Alton. Um, do you want to just share your viewpoint as far as because so as far as the con motions for contempt, um, I, I don't think we're in a position to hear them today uh, mm -hmm. because you were served late and you didn't have opportunity to respond to them. Uh, do you have any questions or comments related to the contempts as far as moving forward today? Because I'm, I'm planning on not moving forward on the contempts today. I got served the I got served the hearing notice on the tenth from the sheriff's department. Um, they had went out to my grandparents' address, which is where all the paperwork goes. And my grandma called me and said a sheriff was out there with the papers. So I ended up getting a hold of the sheriff's office. And then I met the sheriff down in Kelso at McDonald's. Um, my question is, is everything was filed at the same time. It was all, she had all the paperwork at the same time. Um, there's false ac accusations this whole thing is absolutely absurd um landon has been extremely healthy in my care he's been going to school he he has not attended any school since he's been with ashley i think he's went to one day of school and the day the other day that he attended was the day that i dropped him off um so after i got served from the sheriff's department there I didn't, nobody showed up to get Landon, um, or she didn't contact me. I had no other paperwork. All I had was a restraining order and a hearing notice. So if I can't just, I'm not going to throw my son out on the street. So I kept him overnight and took him to school the next day and dropped him off. I never screamed at him. I talked to him and asked him because I was trying to figure out at the same time what was going on because I had no idea because I had no paperwork. And so I actually went through his phone and found the text messages of him saying that he was scared at my house. And apparently I had pushed Colton over a bed frame, but we were in the mid process of moving. My bed frame was completely torn apart. Colton and McKinley's beds weren't even at the house and Landon's beds were, it was in his room put together. This, Do you mind if I just interrupt just for a moment? Yeah. So you, you're in. It sounds like you're in process of of responding to the allegations that Ms. Keefe raised in her motion for contempt. Generally, what I, I do is I, I make sure that everybody has got a copy of the the motion, and I make sure that if you want to respond in writing, that you'd be given an opportunity to respond in writing, and then we'd come back after a period of time, and then everybody is able to argue their point of view based on the the information that the parties have filed. So. Um, I'm I'm inclined to not hold a hearing on the contempt motions today, uh, rather give you opportunity to file a response to the court and then file or give a copy to Ms. Keefe so she's aware of what your, your position is and would come back in two or three weeks and address the issue. 
Are you comfortable, okay. are you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. Um, so, Ms. Kell, let me just uh, hear from you if you have any if you have any input you th think would be of benefit to share. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. Um, I, I also want to be clear that I have not investigated the details of this current situation. <clears throat> I was alerted yesterday that this was all happening, and so I did want to attend. I know that Ms. Keith has been very concerned since custody transferred to Mr. Alton. Um, my previous guardian ad litem report um, recommended that Mr. Alton be given custody, which he was. Um, when Landon is in the care of Ms. Keith, we notice some pretty traditional patterns of behavior, which is we have issues with uh, Landon attending school. His education drops off the meter pretty quickly. He also tends to, when he's in the care of Ms. Keith, report a lot of stomach problems and, and um, health issues. Landon has been seen by a doctor for those health issues, and the doctor stated that his concern was stress for Landon. Um, as I mentioned, I can't speak to these allegations because I haven't been able to investigate them yet, but my experience of this case is that there is uh, a tendency to exaggerate concerns when they come up in a way to um, make things look bigger than they are on occasion. Uh, and so just to speak to, I am concerned for Landon's education. Uh, when, he's in, when he's in the care of Ms. Keefe, he tends to not go to school. And we get large numbers of unexcused absences and problems like that. Um, but those are the things I have at this point, just a history of understanding. My understanding and perception is that when Landon is with Mr. Alton, um, a lot of things seem to be much more steady, much more consistent. And uh, Landon seems to thrive educationally while he's in his father's care. Okay. All right. Thank you. Could I say something? You can. We're, we're not going to really address and make any decisions today. So it, it may be more of a, uh, what I call a feel-good statement. In other words, okay. you know, something is brought up that maybe we disagree with or doesn't sit with us well. We we there's a human need to to respond. Um, yeah. Really, that's we're not. I'm not making any issue, any decisions related to the contempts and, and the like. So we have a temporary restraining order that's in place that was signed off on looks like on January eighth and filed on January 9th and it was served upon Mr. Mr. Alton. Oh on I think on the 10th of January, that order uh, gives temporary custody uh, of Landon to mom. And so let me ask the parties, uh, Mr. Alton, we talked about the, your response to the contempt motions. I, I don't want to set this out very far. So I'm thinking about setting over just a single week uh, to allow you to file a response. Does that give you enough time? For the contempts or the um, restraining order for the for the contempts and for the restraining order uh, we could we could hear that today um, and address that today uh, over over zoom okay that's fine Ms. Keefe does, will that work out okay for you yeah that's fine okay so let's do this so the motions for contempt the next uh, two weeks are fairly full. So I'm looking at setting the matter to the 21st of February to hear the contempt, February 21st at 9 a.m. Wednesday. Um, and I just check with the parties to see what your schedules look like. Ms. Keefe, your schedule on the 21st of February? Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. Mr. Alton? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Alton, if, if you plan to file a, a response to the, the motions for contempt, please make sure you get those filed. Uh, with the court, and then make sure a copy is provided to Ms. Keith. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, so here there is the temporary restraining order until a, a full full motion can be heard. Um, I'm, and I'll double check with Madam Clerk any issues if we were to go forward as far as your responsibilities and note taking and the like if we were to move forward with the temporary order. Okay. okay. Uh, pardon me with the temporary restraining order. All right. Um, and Ms. Kell, if uh, I'm not sure if you're what your time frames are, certainly you're welcome to. It's open court, so you're welcome to to attend and listen. Uh, but if you need to go, obviously that's uh, that's in your purview and and your discretion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so here there was the um, motion for immediate restraining order that was filed by Ms. Keefe, and so we're going to have a hearing on on those uh, concerns that she's raised. Uh, so generally, in a protection order hearing or restraining order hearing. Um, I would hear from both parties. I'd put you under oath. Um, both of you would would share your information. I generally don't allow 
uh, people mm -hmm. to ask each other questions. Uh, generally, uh, the person who's asking for the restraining order goes first. They share their information, which is Ms. Keefe. Mr. Alton, you'd be able to hear everything. Sure. The clerk just asked me to pause for a second. We have an issue with the recording system, so bear with me one moment. Right. So, so Ms. Keefe would go first. She would share her information about what her concerns are. Then Mr. Alton, you would be able to hear her concerns, respond to her concerns, and then share any, any new information that you think is relevant. And then it would be back to Ms. Keefe to share information about any new information that Mr. Alton shares during his time. And so generally, that, that's the, uh, the, the process that we go through. I may interrupt the parties with questions. And if I do, please don't take offense. I'm just trying to get the information that I, I need. Um, and then once we've heard from both parties, then I, I would make a make a decision on whether the temporary order becomes a, a more permanent or a longer lasting Thank order. You. Thank you. All right. If you just like to lay out what your what your concerns are and why you're asking for the uh, restraint restraining order. Um, I, there's been a bunch of abuse going on in Garrett's home that Landon's informed me about. Jessica is smacking her children, screaming in her children's face. They're pushing them around. Now Garrett's pushing Colton, who's seven, on the ground. Her kids are completely out of control. They're biting Landon. They're hitting Landon. Their house is it, it's just completely out of control. Um, Garrett is verbally and mentally abusing Landon. He is talking poorly about me any chance he can get. He calls me an alcoholic. He tells me I'm a bad mother or tells him I'm a bad mother. He It's just a constant bad-mouthing me. Um, Landon's brother got taken away for his situations and Landon has like PTSD from that. And so taking, go, going to a stranger's house and then him treating him like that and saying, like when he got served, Garrett told him to have fun on his vacation and he'll see him on the 31st. Like he's just mentally abusing him any chance he can get. Um, I made an appointment as soon as I could with his primary care doctor and we discussed the stress, which just got diagnosed. So I'm not sure how they're already knowing, but um, we talked about the stress. He apologized for his dad's behavior because he freaked out yelling in the um, the office, the dental or dental the, the doctor's office. He was screaming at the receptionist trying to get me out because I wanted to see what was going on with Landon. Um, he was threatening to call the cops on me. He was verbally abusing me. And all in front of Landon and other people, we had to have the manager of the doctor's office come out and calm him down before we could even go into a room like with the doctor and Landon. He refused to let Landon see his primary care doctor that he's been seeing since he was like three. He refused to let him see him by himself. Um, he he asked Landon if he was scared and he said yes. Um, he repetitively tells me he's scared. He oh, texted me. Do you mind if I interrupt? It looks like uh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Alton popped off the screen and looks like he's back on. Mr. Alton, are you, are you there? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. But can I stop my video and see if that'll help? Yeah, yeah, sometimes that helps. Uh, so the audio flows and there's less demand on the, the bandwidth. So if you want to turn your camera off, that's fine. I'll ask that when you get to a, your turn to testify, if you can, we'll have you turn it on, but you can turn it off, turn off the camera now. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I apologize, Ms. Keefe. Uh, That's okay. Go ahead. Um, so we went in. He he tried to have me escorted. They wouldn't let him because I do have rights to be there. Um, so he finally dropped that. I got Landon an appointment um, last week. They have actually put him on anxiety medication um, that he took well, like when he had a panic attack. Um, I've been in contact with CPS um, from when um, Garrett called it on me the last time. So I've had her number and I've contacted her through all my decisions and everything. Um, I called her because I would get to the school and Lana would just have a complete meltdown. I did keep him home two days because of the medication. Um, cause I didn't know how it was going to be. Cause sometimes it can make you fall asleep or make you weird feeling. I didn't want him to be there and scared more because it was getting him a little bit of anxiety to take something new. Um, so I kept him home for those two reasons. And CPS also told me like, if he's having complete panic attacks, then to keep him for longer. He was having nightmares. He's been waking up several times a night. He's having nightmares. Garrett's coming and taking him from school. He's having nightmares that Garrett's just keeping him. He's scared to be there. Like, I don't know what else to do. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, Garrett also is supposed to not be smoking marijuana or anything else um, in the care of Landon. Landon's caught him smoking. Uh, Garrett went through his phone because he sent me a picture of something and he's like, my dad's smoking this and he got in trouble for that. And it was marijuana. Um, he, his levels are extremely high. I, I used it in, when I was in my other case and I haven't smoked for like almost two years and his levels are like almost one and a half 
over what my levels were. And I used him for anxiety throughout the day and for sleeping. And he's only told us that he uses it for sleeping. He's completely abusing it. And with his heroin abuse, when he did heroin, when we were together, if he would come down from a high whatsoever, he would completely get aggressive. He'd be rude. He'd push me around. He'd yell at me. He's doing the same thing to our son. And they don't have a relationship at all. Garrett's not been around. He was gone for a year before he started this with no contact whatsoever. He never reached out to him. And now he's just trying to come in and completely disrupt Landon's life. And it's throwing him overboard. He sent me a TikTok a couple weeks ago that was about this kid that got bullied at school and bullied at home and he himself. And so I called him. I'm like, hey, like that, what did you send me that for? And he's like, oh, I was just, it was just sad. And so we kind of brushed it off. I was like, well, you know, like not to feel that way. Like, can you talk if you feel that way? And he's like, yeah, I know. And so then a couple weeks later, he sent me a message and he's like, you promised you, I, I added that message in the papers, but he was like, you promised not to be mad at me. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be mad at you. What's going on? And he said that he was thinking about hurting himself. And so Garrett has me blocked to where even on the um, app, you can now do phone calls, but he's blocked my number, my cell phone number. So I can't call him. I tried to call him, tried to call him on the app. It wouldn't let me. And then, so I called the cops because I didn't know what else to do. It was almost 930 and his phone shuts off. And so um, the cops called him and I couldn't talk to Landon for the rest of the night. And I was worried. And then he told me the next day that Garrett screamed at him and yelled at him and told him to stop lying, that he doesn't feel that way. He's not taking his mental health seriously. And Garrett has mental health issues. I've been with him. I've known him since we were 15. I know him. He has it too. And I also have mental health issues. He's not taking it seriously. He's going about it all in the wrong way. Landon's a soft person. You can't just scream at him or yell at him. You have to talk to him. Um, Also with the schooling and everything, I I took him out to homeschool him and they didn't give me the chance to homeschool him. Garrett has not been around. He doesn't know how I parent. Uh, Heather only saw Landon before he got taken and the day he got taken she never checked in on him to make sure he was okay she never talked to him again until he was no she never talked to him again so i she she didn't even know how he was nobody knew how he was and he was stuck there he couldn't even talk to his mom he's got ptsd going on i set him up with a. Uh, I talked to cps and i also talked to his primary care doctor and i got him enrolled in core health youth also on top of his original counselor that he goes to and um, we're going to start that on the 13th was as soon as we could get in. Um, but he also, Garrett also moved out of the school district again without notifying me. Um, and so now he's going to have to start a new school because he's not in Huntington School District anymore. Um, I'm in Toodle School District and his brother goes to Toodle. His best friends go to Toodle. He has a great support system there. His best friend's mother works there. So he has someone to go to at all times. He knows the teachers. I know the teachers because I went K through 12 there. And if he needs to switch schools, I believe that Toodle will be his best interest in at all. I've been trying to get back to Toodle anyways since we left. And I just think that Lana's mental health is very, very scary right now. Um, CPS has also been notified about not only Landon, but also the other children in Garrett's home. Um, and I think that I have it all for now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You you mentioned uh, at the outset some concerns related to uh, treatment of the of Landon at the home of the father. How how do you know that information? Landon. How old's Landon? Almost thirteen. Okay. And did you see? You said that there. Oh, did you see any physical marks on his body? He hasn't physically touched Landon, but he's threatened to hurt him so bad that he can't walk. He's threatened to beat him. He's He threatens him with violence. He did the same thing with me. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, the episode at the doctor's office, when did that occur? Um, that happened, I think, on Halloween. I'm pretty sure it was on Halloween. Yeah, it was on Halloween. I brought him his costume. So after, was that addressed in any type of motion? Um, I believe I put it into the contempt stuff from him um, trying to push me out. In the most recent contempt or prior contempts? Um, The most recent contempt. So I'm just going to take a look at your motion. When you indicated that you weren't able to call through the the app, but you had instead called nine one one, 
What was the result of the 911 call? Um, I yeah. asked her to go out and talk to him because um, they're supposed to have like a crisis line type thing was what I was told by dispatcher. Um, the officer called me back and she said that she would try to go out there. Um, she actually, she actually just called Garrett and I asked her to just go down there and like communicate to make sure Lena was okay. And she refused. Um, she said that, uh, she thought that some, it'd be more scary to talk to somebody in a uniform than to talk to his dad. And I told her that he'd be more comfortable. Um, Garrett also, when he served me with this contempt or with this whole order that we're in, when he couldn't find me at my residence, Landon had him escorted off of our property by an, a police officer and he got in the police officer's face. Landon has a, a lot of reason to be afraid of Garrett. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Alton, I'll, I'll turn the time to you. Okay. Um, so I'm, we're talking about the doctor's office and stuff, but that's supposed to be talked about in a few weeks. So I thought we were talking about the stuff for the restraining order today. That's what we're um, talking about is the motion for the restraining the order. Right. Okay. So do I want, do you want me to answer anything about the doctor's office or? You can, if you'd like, I mean, Ms. Keith, I can kind of explain. Said. Okay. Um, so what happened at the doctor's office was Landon was having stomach issues and every time he would go to Ashley's house for visitation is when he would have the stomach issues and he wouldn't go to school. They would go to the emergency department on like a Friday and then they would go back sometimes on a Monday, but never throughout the weekend. Um, so I made appointments with Dr. Lee, which is his primary care physician. And we had an appointment with Dr. Lee up in Castle Rock. So Landon and I showed up at his doctor's appointment and Ashley showed up. So Landon has a tendency to lie when his mom puts things in his head. And so I thought it was better that Landon talked to his doctor without Ashley or me there. Um, there was never a big scene there. It was more me. It looks like you cut off uh, your audio. Uh, said it wasn't I've, I'm not sure why I'm cutting out when I've, I was, was going to stop my the, video again. I'm sorry. Time. Yeah. That was the first time you cut out. So just keep the video off and continue. Um, so there was never any screaming. There was never anything about, there was more talk about me not wanting Ashley there because Landon would continue to lie about what was going on. Um, I, I never threatened to call the police. I called the Castle Rock police department to see if there was anything that they could do to help me out. I went outside and I made the phone call and they said that there was nothing I could do. So I checked the parenting plan and there was nothing in the parenting plan that said that she couldn't be there. So then I went back inside and talked to the nurse or the receptionist that was there and said, let's just go ahead and do this and we'll figure it, you know, we'll get it all taken care of. We went in the room, we talked to Dr. Lee, and he said that him missing days of school was absolutely unnecessary. Um, his stomach issues were most likely from anxiety or stress um and he recommended that we have a second of, or get a go to a specialist ultrasounds so we made the appointment went to the specialist for ultrasounds and they ultrasound they did an ultrasound on every organ in landon's body and nothing was wrong they said that it's most likely from stress or anxiety so that was that was the the doctor incident um i have never screamed at landon the reason that the dispatch did not send an officer up was because i when i was talking to her on the phone they said that ashley sounded irrational and they seemed they see no reason to send an officer up to my house um i went in landon's room and we had probably a hour and a half long discussion about what suicide was and what like what it is because i have had a family member just a couple years ago that committed suicide, and i never <laughs> once bad mouthed ashley i've always told landon from day one i want what's best for you i want what's best for your mom 
And I want nothing more than for you to go to your mom's more and spend more time with your mom. But when the manipulation and everything is continuing to go on and he's not going to school, he hasn't attended school hardly at all when he's in Ashley's care. Um, there's, <clears throat> I was, there's just no reason for him to go there extra time when he can't make it to school. I went to his parent teacher conferences a little over a month ago and they said, He's a great student. He's absolutely amazing. The only problem that they had was when he started missing school. And those were on the days that Ashley was keeping him from school and that he was sick and would not go and pick up any of his homework to get done, make up any of his work. So he started falling further and further behind. Um, Landon has a counselor at his school that he sees every Thursday. Um, he has not seen his counselor in a couple of weeks now because he hasn't went to school. Um, I've done, I've done absolutely everything I can to help <laughs> Landon mentally. I know how Landon, I don't scream and I don't yell at Landon. I talk to Landon like he's a person. Um, I have a video on my phone. Well, it looks like Mr. Um, Alton inadvertently signed off. We'll just wait till he comes back on. Okay, you, you were mentioning a, a video. Try to find. Yes, I have a video on my phone from when I took him to school that morning, and I had a conversation with Landon about what was going on and why he was saying that you know I Jessica and I were hitting the kids because Jessica and I have never hit our kids. They, when they're at their extreme worst, they get a swat on the butt and might get sent to the corner. 95% of the time, they get sent to the corner for three, five minutes to think about what's going on. And that has seemed to work for us. Um, as far as Landon getting hit and bit, that's, I don't, I have never heard of anything like that. Landon's never brought up anything about him getting bit he's there's been a couple times where they're you know mckinley would go up and uh hit him or something but it was playing it was not it's not a it's not her trying to hurt him she's a four-year-old kid trying to play with her you know stepbrother they're they're very close mckinley and landon are extremely close we can never get mckinley to leave landon's room because she always wants to be in there with him um the i just the accusations for jessica and i slapping and mistreating our kids is absolutely absurd they're they go to their dad's house 50 percent of the time there's never been any accusations that the kids have told their dad um Jessica and I and Jeff, which is Colton McKinley's dad, we've we go to wrestling meets for the kids. We go to sporting events. We all co-parent just fine. There's never been a problem at all through that. So I just it's to me completely absurd at what she's trying to say right now. Um Landon's super healthy at my house. He goes to school every day. He comes home. He They don't give out much homework at Huntington. Um, <clears throat> but when he's attending school, he's doing amazing. He's happy when he comes home. Um, there's a lot of days where he comes home and he's excited to go to school the next day, talking about you know what they're going to do on Friday in class. Um, the... The situation with Landon and his younger brother, I have done my best to make sure that Landon and Eli have been reunited since Ashley hasn't taken the steps to do to do that herself. Um, my girlfriend and I actually talk to Brock and Desiree quite often. We've taken the we've taken Landon to Eli's football games. I have pictures when we did that. Um I feel like I've done everything necessary to help Landon out and get him to where he needs to be. And every time I turn around, Ashley is trying something else to disrupt the process and can't get aboard what is actually going on. 
Landon, Landon does need help. He needs a lot of help. Um, and if she's got him into extra counseling, then that's, I completely agree with that. Um, I've been looking into that recently. Um, I did not move from Kelso school district. I moved from Olson road in Longview over to Kelso, which is still in Kelso school district. Um, Ashley kept trying to contact me outside of the family wizard app. So I blocked her phone number because in the parenting plan, the only contact to be made is through the family wizard app. And she kept going outside of that contacting me. So I blocked her number because they did bring on, they brought the calls to family wizard and I thought I got it set up. And then she sent me a message saying that she still couldn't make phone calls to me. So then I went back through and I had to verify one more thing to get the calling set up. So the calling is set up on the family wizard app and she was notified that we were moving because when Landon went to her house for Christmas break, um, <clears throat> she called me from a random number because I had her blocked and Landon wasn't feeling good that morning. So since it was a short day, I told him he could stay home. And then she called me five minutes later asking to get him from a random number. And I told her, yeah, that's fine. And then she was asking me, you know, oh, have you guys found a, a place to live yet? Or, you know, asking me about where we're living. And I told her that, yeah, I had just applied for a place over in Kelso. And it was okay, cool, that's good. And that was where that got left at. Okay, thank um, you. Yep. Do you, um, one quick question. There was uh, concerns raised by by Ms. Keefe related to, to marijuana use. Can you, can you address that? Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, so it is in our parenting plan that because Ashley has an alcohol problem, um, the judge said it. So where, when Landon is not in our care, we can use drink alcohol or use marijuana. There's nothing illegal about it. And Landon sent a picture to Ashley because he Ashley had him, going around and snooping through things and Landon found an empty one that was in the car in the glove box and took a picture of it empty uh, like vape pen and sent it to his mom. So I seen that and I just asked him, I said, Hey, you know, what's going on? And he said, Oh, well I found this and sent a picture to her. So Obviously, there's she's talking to Landon about the court case because land it's it's a little it's just a vape cartridge. You don't know what it is. And, you know, and I was I never used it when Landon was in my care. And I've I've done everything exactly to the parenting plan as close as I can come to following it. I. OK, all right. Thank you. I think Mr. Mr. Alden will hear from Ms. Keefe just briefly. He has had four months to quit on his marijuana use. And like I said before, I smoked it for multiple reasons, not just his allegedly for sleeping, which he's never had a problem sleeping. I've known him since I was 15 years old. Um, he, he keeps calling me an alcoholic, but I am not. He has only proof from my ex-best friend who was being abused. And I brought that to attention of her father's, the children, or the, the fathers of her children when she would not leave an abusive relationship and it started getting abusive towards the children. And so she is against me. She's made false accusations. She has called the cops on me for drinking and driving. I talked to three police officers that knew I was not drinking and driving. There's nothing proving that I have an alcohol issue. I do not drink that often. Um, I have a negative uh, substance abuse, complete everything. I had a, a random UA when I took that and it was negative. I had nothing in my system, no alcohol, no marijuana, nothing. Um, Landon doesn't want to be there. He knows he doesn't want to be there. He's afraid of him. He does not have a relationship with him. Garrett is forcing a fatherly relationship with a 12 year old child that he does not know. So he doesn't take him seriously. I smoked when Eli got taken. And that was one of the main reasons. Um, Landon is aware he's 13 years old. There are kids smoking marijuana in Huntington. He knows what a cartridge looks like. Um, I am not telling him to snoop around his dad's house because I know how he is. And so I do not want my child to be screamed at and mentally abused or anything more than what he's already getting. Um, Garrett has a daughter because he keeps bringing up my child who I am serving to get custody back. I'm going for 50-50 next week. 
Um, Garrett has a daughter that he refuses to put into this at all that he has not seen in several years. The only reason he saw him was because we got back together a couple years ago for a minute and I helped him get his daughter back. Um, he moved from the Huntington school district. He did not move from Kelso school district, but he still moved from the district, which makes Landon have to switch schools. And again, I think Tootle school district is the best interest. He does not do well in a big school. That is why I tried to homeschool him. I am aware that he is hard to get to go to school. He's puking in my car when I like, how am I supposed to send a child that's having a panic attack? Well, he's puking in his pants because he has such bad anxiety to school. Garrett has literally left him at school after he in his pants from anxiety and had him go to a stranger's house and sit there while Garrett was fishing. Like Garrett is not, Landon is not Garrett's top priority. Um, I never asked about his housing. The only reason I knew was because Landon told me I have not, I, I don't communicate with Garrett. We are not friends. I don't ask him any questions. And again, he told you that I was blocked. So how was I supposed to know he was moving? So that doesn't make any sense. Um, Landon's failing mostly all of his classes. He needs help. He doesn't understand most of the stuff. Huntington doesn't give out enough homework, so there's no way for us to help him. Um, I have videos of Landon having his panic attacks. that They're horrible. They will be like 30 plus minutes long of him scream crying, saying he's scared of his dad, that he doesn't want to go there. He doesn't want to go to Huntington. A child threatened to shoot Landon and Garrett didn't even inform me. And the principal wouldn't even call me back because Garrett refused to put me on the, the school documents. So I wasn't even listed as a mother. His girlfriend that he breaks up with every other week was on there as a mother. Um, Landon is seeing his original counselor and his core health counselor. Um, Landon doesn't talk to Garrett about his mental issues because he doesn't trust him. He he doesn't he doesn't have that relationship with him. Garrett can say he does all he wants, but you can't come into his life at six years old, disappear again for over a year and then only come back to threaten me about taking him from me saying you're going to do the same thing that Eli got, like happened with my younger son like that's just it's just not I don't know and Jessica has Landon has told me Jessica doesn't want him there they've gotten into arguments because they were mad at Landon and he's heard her say she doesn't he doesn't want her there um also Landon says that Jessica so Garrett says Jessica's baby's father is like they're good and everything but landon says that jessica continuously says that her ba her husband or ex whatever he is child's father they are they they, they they are abusive so he says that jessica says that they're abusive too so they're just pointing the fingers at each other apparently i and that appointment that he said that i showed up to i made that appointment he did not make that appointment i made that appointment on halloween um again i just really think that toodles in his best interest i think that if garrett's going to I mean, he's still new at this point. Landon has no trust with him. I think that supervised visits or someone that can see him interact with Landon, because if he's lying, then he's lying. But I, he's never lied to me. He doesn't lie to me. So I think a professional seeing him interact with Landon is in Landon's best interest. My 12 year old saying he wants to hurt himself. Like, I'm completely concerned. I think that's all. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Keith. Thank you. Add like one, just one quick thing. Um, the only reason why I wasn't involved with Landon for a good majority of his life was because Ashley made a fake attorney test and her and another man submitted. I'm sorry, a that's double jeopardy. That has already been, Garrett, you were back in his life from the time he was five. I'll, I'll, I'll make decisions, legal decisions as to whether there's double jeopardy or other issues. I'll, I'll allow Mr. Alton to finish. Okay. Uh, there was a fake paternity test that was filed. So her creditation already is completely invalid. There's CPS recommends that Landon is in my care. The guardian is <laughs> that Landon is my, in my care. Landon has the CPS, uh, ladies. Mr. Alton, Mr. Alton, I, I, I'm yeah. just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off. I, I appreciate your desire to share additional information. Uh, but I, I think I have enough to, to address the issues that were, that were raised in, in the, in the motion. So I appreciate the interest in sharing additional, but I, I have enough information. So one thing in, in listening to the to the parties, you know, I'm this is this case is relatively new to me. You all have been living uh, this life, and you're you're having your child in life for for much longer time than than I've been exposed to it. So necessarily, my understanding of all the issues is, is limited. It's not it's not complete, and it's obviously imperfect. So one thing that stands out to me is that the 
the child uh, needs continual support and 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 help. I think that's 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 clear from what I, I'm hearing. It sounds like the stress and the anxiety uh, is very difficult for him. Um, and uh, just encourage uh, the parties to to do your continued best to to support and, and care for him and, and make his life as as good as possible. Uh, there's allegations of, of physical of physical and emotional abuse. Um, uh, here, there's indications that there's you know there's there's screaming, there's hitting, there's biting. Uh, there's um, no no physical evidence that that Landon is being physically abused as far as like leaving marks on him. Uh, Mr. Alton indicates is that you know ninety five percent of the time it's 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 speaking with the children or or time out. Uh, Five percent of the time uh, he indicated that spanking on the on the backside. Uh, so so we don't while well, while there's concerns raised by Ms. Keefe related to the emotional well being of the child, it sounds like the emotional well being of the child is, it has been an issue and it continues to be an issue and may be continuing to be an issue uh, in in the future. Uh, both parties are restricted from consuming alcohol or mind-altering substances during the time that they have the child. There's no restriction otherwise. Uh, also, there's an indication uh, that the educational decision-making is solely within the control of Mr. Mr. Alton. Um, so I, I think it's I think it's always um, very important that parents uh, be parents and not involve children in adult matters. It never ever goes right for the child. It may seem like a good thing to do, but the child is a child and it's overwhelming. It's too much for kids to handle uh, two parents that that child dearly loves uh, and they have allegiance to each. And then when when one parent raises a, an issue and involves the child in that, it tears that child apart. It is inappropriate and exceptionally harmful for children to be involved in parental issues. And that's my sense here is that that's a, that's a good possibility. Whether it's happening for sure, I don't know. But it sure seems to me that there's some inkling or some some glimmering uh, evidence that would suggest that, that that's occurring. Uh, in particular, um, information related to the, the pen, the vape pen, or what have you. So I would just caution for what it's worth uh, to not involve the child in any adult matters because it will literally rip them in half emotionally and that's not fair to that child and that's can, can be absolutely prevented uh by not involving the child in adult matters and and that to really anything related to the parenting plan and, and the like the other issue is that there's concerns uh related to the well-being of the child you know there's concerns about the TikTok video and the like and Sounds like uh, there's additional support that existing and additional support that's happening through both the school and also core. So that that's that's really good to hear that there's that that's happening. Um, and I think it's also important to note with the, these types of cases is, is that when children share information with with one parent or the other parent, there's a natural inclination for children to tailor that information to the hearer or to the receiver of that information. And they they know their parents pretty well. Um, they know information that will uh, be perceived in a certain way, and they try to please their parents. Um, so, overall, having reviewed the motion and heard from the parties, I'll, I'll make a finding that there's an in, insufficient basis to continue the restraining order. So, the restraining order ends at this time. The August 31st, 2023 parenting plan is in effect and continues. Uh, so, I'll, I'll I'll draft an order that denies the motion. Um, and then the parties will return to the uh, parenting plan. And I think the parenting plan at this point um, applies in that Mr. Alton is the custodial parent and that the Ms. Keefe has the second and fourth weekends, Thursday after school to Monday at school. Uh, so I'm making an assumption that Landon is in school today and that uh, we uh, are the, pardon? He's not in school today. Uh, obviously, that's a concern uh, given the, the past track record and history in the case. So the child, Landon, uh, let's see, well, today's the last week of January. So looks like uh, the time is the, the father. So the child is to return to the father today after school and or when Mr. Alton gets off work. Okay. I have a... Ms. Keith. I don't understand how he can leave for a year. He can do false accusations. I've been raising him by myself for 12 and a half years. And then you guys just take my kid away. I don't understand this. If, if that's a motion for reconsideration, I'll deny your motion for reconsideration. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll draft that order. And then the exchange is to occur today after Mr. Uh, Mr. Alton is off work. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That'll conclude the matter.